Welcome to Big Homeopathy. I'm your host, Sarah Thompson. Hi, welcome to Big Homeopathy. I'm your host, Big Homeopath, Sarah Thompson. I'm terrified of this week's post, and I hope I can get through it without crying. But I know that means that I have to make it. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I never would have gone through treatment. I'd rather have died. Those aren't my words, but when I read them, I wept because I was reading them in an article about female sexual dysfunction after bone marrow transplant. When I was in my late teens and early 20s, I took the birth control pill for a while, and the birth control pill makes your body think it's pregnant. In my case, it also made my body think that sex was unnecessary and inconvenient, but I had learned through the skewed social lens of the environments that I was in that uh, sexuality was the female social currency of choice. And if that was the capital that you had to build to navigate that world successfully, then I was going to build that capital. A digression. I received uh, portfolio photographs last night from a photo shoot that we did on the beach with the family a couple of weeks ago. And I hated the way I looked in every single one of them. I didn't, I couldn't stand the way my eyes looked, the way my makeup looked, the way my hair looked, the way my facial structure looked, the way my smile looked. Nothing about me measured up. Where does that come from? Why does it matter what I look like? Is there any evidence that anything about my life would be better if I were better looking in some kind of conventional terms? Would I be more successful? Would I be richer? Would I be, I don't know what. I can point to a million examples to show that that can't possibly be true. And yet it's somewhere inside of me. And I don't remember when I started to think that my hair was too fine and my lips were too thin and my eyes were too small. Probably from the adulation of my peers and the and adulation of celebrities. And I do know that my feelings about my stomach not being flat enough and my butt being too small came from listening to women around me talk about themselves. You know, I think you don't enter puberty as a blank slate. You enter it with all of the maternal baggage of generations behind you as a woman. I wasn't on my own. I was at the vanguard of an army of ghosts. And without a fundamental sense of my own worth and value on my own terms, I had nothing to attach it to except external validation. And if somebody wants to have sex with you, then that's external validation of your worth, or it was in the world that I was in. And so how I felt really didn't matter. It was really behind the, beside the point, and I could completely sideline it. But then I found myself as an adult in a relationship that was truly supportive and fulfilling. And I discovered that I was completely divorced and disconnected from any innate sense of my own sexuality. And I stopped taking the birth control pill. And when I did that, this major layer of fog lifted. But there was still so much baggage there. And then I got pregnant and all of the hormone associated feelings of all of those generations and of what I'd been through myself uh, just infused my body. And I kind of shut down. And then I had another pregnancy and then I went into the hospital. There's no shortage of uh, repetition of the imagery of the arc of female sexuality as being 
in the blossom of uh, the starlet and then fading to the withered crone. And it's easy to conflate fertility with sexuality. And it's not surprising that after pregnancy and birth, women feel disinterest and weariness. This is a common refrain in mother's circles. Uh, but then to go into a treatment that made me infertile was an extra layer for me to have to process. And when I came out of treatment, and I started to feel better physically, and I started to feel better emotionally, and I still didn't feel better sexually, I started to look for answers. And that's when I found this quote. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I never would have gone through treatment. I would rather have died. And I was so angry. I felt so betrayed. Where was my informed consent? Where was my informed consent when the doctors gave me powerful hormonal drugs as a teenager? Where was my informed consent when they put me in medical menopause? Where was my informed consent with the drugging and the poisoning? I had to sign things that said I might die. I had to sign things that said I might not get better. I had to sign things that said I might experience future cancers and other sequelae. I definitely had to sign things that said that I would most likely be infertile. But I don't remember signing on the dotted line of you may experience revulsion, disgust, abhorrence, failure, grief, guilt, and a complete destruction of this entire part of your life. Where was that consent for me? It wasn't there. And I became a victim of that story. And when I tried to get help from therapists, they didn't understand. A lot of women go through this kind of feeling, but not a lot of women go through the kind of treatment that I had been through. And my story felt unique to me. And I got, I felt really desperate. But I knew that homeopathy could work miracles. And so I put my faith in that. And I lost it again and again and again. But then sometimes something little would shift and there would be a renewed glimmer of promise. And a lot has changed in five years. With each new course of homeopathy, I feel renewed inspiration, renewed receptivity, renewed courage. And I learned partly through the work of the narrative healing work of Louis Mel Madrona that in order to truly heal, we need to connect with our cultural and familial and personal history and ancestry. And well, I was so angry. Why hadn't I gone to India where homeopathy is a mainstream treatment for cancer? Why hadn't I gone into the jungle to be reborn? Anything other than the American medical system. I came to realize that the choices that I made were right for me. Conventional oncology is as much the medicine of my people as homeopathy, and probably more so than Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, which isn't to say that those things don't work, but what I did was my path. And I found that I could be receptive to embracing what I had chosen and believing that things could get better. And I found a wonderful coach who has helped me work through the painful and difficult process of accessing 42-year-old feminine sexuality as opposed to keening in grief over the loss of a Hollywoodified teenage passion. And I won't say that it's done. I won't say that I'm out of the woods, but I'm truly moving forward. And it was letting go of that victim story that I was a victim of the medical system and believing that I had made the right choices for me and that I could thrive through them that 
has allowed me to really finally feel like I'm in the best health of my life. That's big homeopathy this week, and it's pretty huge. See you next week.